Loving it. All right, so we will be interacting with this audience in just a bit, but for now, please help me welcome my next guest who's very passionate about babies and parenting, and she's a great blogger as well. Everybody, welcome Rogoro Kimani to the show. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Have a seat. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for having me here, Kobe. All right. So tell me your story. As a young lady, you, did you always know you wanted to get into medicine? Yes. I have known that for some time now. I have always admired the power of God to change people's lives. Mm -hmm. But I've also liked the power of human intervention on people's health and people's lives and people's well-being. So I decided I'd like to take part in that. OK. Yeah. Getting into the medical field, you know, it's one thing to, yeah. I, I always loved babies, but there's no way I would have get, gotten into the medical field. But loving one thing and then actually following it through and having to go through what it takes to become a pediatrician, you decided that very early on. Um, tell me a little bit about that decision and what it took for you to actually go to medical school. Hmm. <clears throat> um, so, I am the first one of six children. I have very good parents very hard working, they can be able to juggle work and still take care of us, take care of us all. So I admired that and since I also took part in taking care of all the other children, I decided that maybe I would take it to a higher level and do it from, from the hospital. And it also takes hard work, patience, and perseverance. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think being uh, in, anywhere in the medical fraternity is a calling. Uh, and especially if you look at what's happening right now yeah. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, doctors want more. They, they want their needs heard. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about what your future looks like based on what we're currently going through? Right now, I'm very, very sorry for the patients in hospitals. Mm -hmm. You see it on the TV every day, it's sad. But before you have a change, you must go through a rough patch. I believe this is a paradigm shift for our country right now. We need to have the change from the government side and also from the hospital side and also from the public. So I think we have a very, very bright future ahead of us. That's great, that's yeah. really good to hear, right? Mm -hmm. It's a good thing when you hear uh, someone in the, uh, you know, someone who's actually in the field saying, mm -hmm. saying something so positive. Looking at, of course, parenting, which is our keen focus today, um, and then looking at young parents yeah. who are raising kids in the 21st century, you decided to cater to that demographic of those who've already had the baby, they don't have any health issues, but they've got questions. Um, tell me a little bit about the conceptualization of your blog and why the keen focus on parenting. So in our society now, we do not have a bar where in which we can measure our parenting to. We have bars for work, bars for education, but we take parenting as a task that you can do off head. So I decided that I would take my time, do my research, um, coupled up with my pediatrics work, I would come up with something good, something where anyone in the country, in the world would look up to and get ideas and points on what to do. I cover all sides from nannies, uh, psychological growth, feeding, literally every single thing. It's a go-to place. Okay, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Um, the need right now when, uh, I, I know that you started this blog without sort of knowing yeah. that you were speaking to hundreds of people, yeah. but you are, and l looking at your blog and how you started it and some of, some of the early feedback that started coming, how did you deal with that? Okay, so how I started it? I started it by putting up posts on Facebook then asking anyone who wants to get the whole, the whole article to email me their email addresses. Okay. At times I'd get over a thousand emails, so it was a bit hard sending out emails to every single person. So I decided to get a platform where everybody else would look at the, at the content at their own convenience. So that's how the blog came up. I have very many readers per day. I'm liking that. Um, comments, feedback, my social media pages, it's very, very encouraging. Okay. Questions and all that. What kind of questions do you often get? Okay. I had a question from a lady, which was, I haven't written on that yet, but she was asking about her child who has Down syndrome. Okay. Managing that, uh, at what age you should take out a baby for sunbathing, feeding. Uh, what Sleeping, I know, is huge. Sleeping. That is a right. huge thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we actually are going to try and get a caller on the line, okay. all right, all the way from Meru. Uh -huh. I know that she's watching at the moment, all right, yeah. but your dad is here. Yes, he is. Yes. Her dad is here, looking all kinds of proud. 
and I cannot not talk to you, Dad. How are you? I'm very fine. Excellent. Tell us your name, sir. Uh, my name is George Kimani Getao, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm dad to Rogoro Kimani. Okay. Yes. Young, amazing, ambitious lady. Was she always like this? Uh, she has been uh, always like that. Yeah. Very hardworking and always looking ahead. Amazing. Now, Rogoro, one of the things, and maybe dad, you can come in on this. One of the things that I noted when we were doing some research on you is you're not a mom yet. Yes. Right? Yet way. being the key word. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but you do have knowledge. Do you sometimes feel that, you know, some people might disregard your advice or your point of view because you're not a parent yet? I have a lot of questions from people. Okay. Why are you telling this and you're not a parent yet? So I have backed up information. I have answers that I give. I have really good parents. You can see that from my dad and my mom. And I also have background information from my classwork, from my pediatrics, from my pediatrics classes. So you are speaking from a place of knowledge. Yeah, exactly, from an expert's point of view. Okay. Yeah. Dad, what can you say about those critics who say, hey, you're not a mom, why should I listen to you? Uh, what I would say that is that uh, they should take uh, her seriously. The advice that uh, she normally gives should be taken uh, seriously because, that <coughs> because uh, what we normally do uh, as a family, uh, we usually sit down, uh, try to understand our kids, uh, we guide them, mm -hmm. we show them what is necessary, and of course, we also support them financially. Okay. Uh, we take them to the right schools, good schools, and of course, every day, or, or at least uh, once a month, or once a week, when they are available, we sit down with them, we look at each and every person, we discuss, we see where somebody is going wrong, and in the process, we end up getting the right people, so uh, the right children. We understand the causes that are uh, or the areas that uh, they, are, they need to follow or maybe to, to undertake their careers. Right now we have uh, Rogoro here, she's in, med uh, in, she's in medicine. We have another one uh, who is in uh, IT. Uh, of course he's in Form 4, but now judging from whatever you have been searching and his performance, the same. We have a lawyer who is coming, we have a presenter. We, all of us, we are covered Yay, in the house. Yay, fantastic! <laughs> Tell me about your parents and, and growing up in this encouraging, beautiful, big family. Okay. At home, we're allowed to say whatever we want to say as long as it's right. Okay. We are not pressed down. You can do whatever you want to do. We are taken out. We have this portion of entertainment. Nice. I strongly believe in child entertainment. Malls belong to children, not just grown-ups who want to have coffee. Yeah. Okay, I love it. Yeah. Honey, you have a caller on the line. Her okay. name is Bridget from Meru. Good morning, Bridget. Good morning to you, Kobe. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm great, I'm are you great. watching? I'm good, I'm good. All right, great. All right, great. So you have a question have a, for uh, Rogoro? Yeah, I have a question for your guest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a small baby. She's one year old. Mm -hmm. And she started teething last week. Teething? You know the baby? Yeah, she started teething last week. The baby is crying, crying uncontrollably. She's a good feed and she's not feeding well anymore. So I'm asking, my question is this, should I give her any painkiller or do I just let it go naturally? What a great question. Thank you, Bridget, for calling. All right, we appreciate that call. Go ahead, answer. When children are teething, they have this irritability in their teeth. It's itchy and it's painful. So what I'd advise is you do not give any painkillers. Children should not be given drugs unless necessary. But we have some creams like dental gel that you can apply in the gums. But that you should only give that when necessary. But just it should be left natural. Okay. Yeah. Looking at our research on our social media platforms, mm -hmm. one of the other uh, frequently asked questions by parents is the issue I talked to, talk to you about earlier is sleeping. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of parents, especially new parents, um, don't know about positions. Uh, a lot of children have issues like colic um, and they're uncomfortable. Talk to us a little bit about the do's and don'ts of how to actually make sure that your baby is getting enough rest. Okay. So for a baby to sleep well, they need to feed well. So you should, you should ensure that the baby feeds approximately, let's say, four times a day, well fed. But as you begin off, just give them milk. Milk, milk will not give colic, but um, it's not that common. But if you start feeding them early, that's when the problem might come in. And for the sleeping position, make sure you light them on the side to avoid certain things such as sudden, sudden childhood deaths. Okay. 
Yeah, so for enough sleep, make sure it's a clean place, well aerated, light them well and make sure they're well fed. Okay. Yeah. Breastfeeding is another issue. Mm -hmm. um, some, some babies have a hard time yeah. adjusting, latching on. Um, some mothers are, I guess, anxious, especially if it's their first time. Talk to us a little bit about feeding, when you, when you, rea when you should realize that there's something wrong when your baby is not eating enough, yeah. and when to let go. Okay. So we have winning. You should start winning by six months. That's when you, that's when you introduce new foods to the you, that's when you introduce new foods to the baby. But you should start off. You should actually first of all start off with fruits. That's what is going to be able to be digested properly in the child's stomach. You can then start off with things like mashed potatoes, bananas, and you should increase the portions as time goes by. But if the baby cries all the time, maybe they're not feeding well. So as a mother, you will know. Yeah, so if you bre breastfeeding fast, um, at six months do breastfeeding and food. With time, let's say two years, you can now stop the, stop the breastfeeding completely, then now continue with the food. Okay, yeah. um, I like that. Um, one of the things that I can definitely say, and it's been a question that a lot of viewers have asked, yeah. is the issue of weight gain, okay? Mm. I know we had a caller once and the baby was so overweight that this woman could literally not carry her baby and he was under six months old. Um, at what point should you realize that actually maybe your baby is gaining way too much weight too fast okay. and or they're not gaining enough weight uh, in, in, in terms of the timing and what do you do in that case? Okay, so for you to realize that your baby is not gaining weight well, you have to have gone to a clinic. A baby gains weight um, depending on the weight that they started off with. There is a pattern in which they add weight with. So if you go to, um, you know we have this anten these postnatal clinics. Yes. So if the baby is not adding weight well, that's when they will be asked, maybe that's when they'll ask you to give any other, <laughs> any other feed. Yeah. Or maybe reduce the amount of food. And this mainly comes in if you're giving them food such as mini eggs, or lots of avocados, just keep the feet light. Okay, Yeah. okay. And I know also, and I should have mentioned this earlier, that, uh, and I remember my, my best friend, when she had her first baby, she was addicted to coffee. And actually, because she was drinking coffee, uh, even one cup, it goes into the milk. So yeah. what you take actually goes into the milk and can exactly. affect the diet of the child as yeah. well. All right, now, uh, terrible twos. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when the child starts to get a personality um, and they end up uh, causing havoc they will basically rule your home yeah. and you you've been at work the whole day your husband has been at work the whole day you come back the nanny wants to leave because she's so upset yeah um, and you've given her all this power the nanny is a huge issue and a huge topic for many parents talk to us a little bit about first of all how to handle a, a toddler a, a terrible too yeah okay so most of us have had terrible twos in our houses the first thing you should do is create a playroom Get a playroom play with blocks and toys and all that. That's an keep area. Them busy. Yeah, or an area. In your, let's say in your sitting room, create an area at the back of the sitting room, somewhere at the corner. Get them that. That will work properly. And again, um, don't give them too much sugar. If you get them the sugar rush all the time, that's when they can't concentrate or they'll keep running up and down or cannot sleep. Mm -hmm. For the nannies, assess a nanny before you get one at home. Don't get one who beats up a child. Yeah. If the child is relaxed, they'll be able to behave normally. And I know a lot of par parents suffer with when it comes to the issue of nannies. Yeah. Um, but this and this is what I advocate for. And please correct me if I'm wrong. These hidden cameras, right? I went to Moy Avenue the other day. They're even 2K. They're 2K in teddy bears, clocks, nini ornaments in the house. I think anybody who has a child who is not a stay-at-home parent should have those cameras. True. I think so, because mm. some of the videos that we see are so alarming. How do you know, or how are you able to identify, and I think this is a loaded question, mm -hmm. how are you able to identify where, that somebody who you've left the care of your child to has, is, is mentally okay? Because some of these people are not mentally okay. How are you uh, supposed to assess, do background checks on some of these people? Is there a formula? Okay, um, there's, there's actually a post on my blog yeah. about that. Okay. So the first thing I think we should do is look at where they're coming from. Most of them from bureaus might be, might be a bit, maybe they've been poached from, from specific places, but do a background check first. Again, look at the educational level. Most of them might be a bit primitive or they may be a bit bitter or all that. Just make sure you, whoever you get into your house is well learned. Also, get a person who's bubbly. 
if you get someone who's always sulky, that's the same person who beat up your child. Mm. So first of all, interact with the person for some time. Don't just bring them up from yesterday at night from, from, from home. Leave them in your home, then go to work. First of all, stay at home for at least two days. See them and know whether you want them or not. Okay. Yeah. One of the things I can definitely say is, you know, I think bringing them in is not as difficult as getting them out. Yeah. We'll talk about that. How mm. to get them out <laughs> without causing too much havoc, right? Yeah. All right, guys, we have another caller on the line. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Stacy. Your name is? Your name is? Stacy. Hi, Stacy. How, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm calling from Eldoret. All right. All right. Fantastic. fantastic. You have a question or Hi, comment for me? Hi. Hi. Yes. Um, I'm not a mother yet either, okay. but I am the firstborn of my family okay. and I have a five-year-old sister okay. who was recently diagnosed with dyslexia. So the problem is I don't know how to handle her because she's always acting up and I know it doesn't mean that she's retarded or she is like less capable mentally but she's always throwing fit and i don't know how to help her because even like simple tasks just getting her dressed for school in the morning is is difficult and i don't know how to raise her or to help raising her in like a loving environment yes oh, thank, you thank you for calling, for calling sister and try to get help for your loved one all right rogoro that's a big one thank you thank you very much mm -hmm. go on okay mm -hmm. so to start that's a condition that we have in very, very many houses now. And what I'd advice is, you should get a professional teach you on how to handle that. We have professionals who handle different developmental conditions in children. Okay. So if you, if, let's say if your whole family gets trained on that, you will not trigger her or do things that might upset her. Okay. So if you, if, you, if you get a professional, do it well, you'll all, you'll all be fine. Absolutely. And yeah. guess what? Um, for, for our last caller, we do actually, and we've even brought some of these people uh, okay. on our show, all right, who deal very particularly with issues like HD, which, which is uh, AD, ADD, ADH, ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder, mm -hmm. all right, Hyper Attention Deficit Disorder, and also Dyslexia. And a lot of these conditions go and diagnosed. Yeah. And you think your child is spoiled, you think your child is a mess, you think they don't concentrate, teachers are just calling the parents all the time. But they, this actually, these conditions have treatment, don't they? They have. They do. And yeah. in the state, it's a whole other ball game, yeah. you know, where kids mm -hmm. are on serious drugs. Yeah. But there is treatment for dyslexia, isn't there? Yeah. Absolutely. So listen, um, if you know someone or if you are that person who has someone in your family or you have dyslexia, please write to us, okay? It's very, very simple indeed. And you can also call us on that line right there on your screen, 0712-932-012, and we'll connect you to the center. They're doing amazing, amazing work. And the earlier that you identify and diagnose, the better it is for this child. And that's with everything. Every single thing. Rogoro, I'll tell you something. I've been doing health shows for forever and yeah. parenting shows for forever. And I, I'll tell you the reason why we opened up the lines today is because there's a lot of fear when it comes to hospitals, when it comes to doctors, when it comes to diagnosis. Uh, a lot of people will let a problem, even in a child, go way too long mm. before actually doing something about that. Tell us why it's important that the Kenyans who are watching today yeah. actually do something when they feel that there's something wrong with their child or themselves. Yeah. So as you said earlier, most people think that their children are spoiled, too active or poorly behaved. So I think parents should also be able to research more. Yeah. You we, we all have access to the internet. So in case you see something abnormal about your child, do it. Because at times when these conditions are not well looked into at a very early stage, they end up going to a level which you, of which you cannot control when they're grown up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it might, even, it might even affect their studying and their education. So I think if you do something early about it, it's, uh, that's the best thing. We might actually be able to handle it. Fantastic. Yeah. Rogoro, you are uh, an amazing blogger. Thank you. Writing all the time, all right? Um, tell us a little bit about your blog. We're going to put it up on our screen, but tell us a little bit about it and, and how people can reach you if they have any more questions. Okay. So my blog name is Exciting Parenting. Yeah. Our website is excitingparenting.com. We have posts on all fields. It's, it's, it's literally the go-to place when you want anything to look into. So you can reach us, um, you can email us on info at excitingparenting.com and also reach us through our Facebook pages. My name is Ruguru Kimani on Facebook and also you can also inbox us on Exciting Parenting on Facebook. Yeah. Have, are you a member of Kilimani Moms? 
Uh, both of them. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, those guys are going to start a movement one day in this country. And we will not believe. They are a force to reckon with. They're like an army. <laughs> Don't yeah. you guys think so? We love yeah. moms. Kilimani moms, what's up? I'm also a member. All right. One of the things in that uh, Facebook group yeah. that a lot of these moms talk about is, yeah, that crazy nanny. Exactly. All right. What's the one who's bigger than you? She looks first body. How do you get rid of this person? <laughs> and, and, or your, your child, like I actually had, I have a friend yeah. whose baby was so attached to the nanny. And so because of that, she recognized it and she just became lazy. She stopped doing anything in the house. She just used to chill because she knows this child is my safety net. <laughs> this mama will never fire me because the child was purely obsessed. Yeah. How do you get rid of these grumpy trows, the negative Nellies who you shouldn't have hired in the first place? How do you get rid of them? So the first place, okay, the first thing that you should do is to ensure that you have the bond with your child. So in case you want to get rid of them, there will be no reactions in between there. But again, you should also make it official that the, the nanny is a worker and you are the employee, even if you have a personal relationship. And so when you tell them to leave, they will not have the, the, the reactions and all. But make sure you don't tell them to leave when you're alone in the house. Get a friend, get your husband, just get anyone else to be there. I saw a story in Kilimani Moms where a lady had the nanny pour hot oil on her when, the, when, when she asked her to leave. Really? Just in case you know she's bad, don't let her leave when you're alone. And this is yeah. something a friend of mine told me, okay? Don't, yeah, don't fire her alone. Do not. Do not. Wait for your husband, your significant other, call the neighbor, call the watch, call anybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And make sure that you, there's somebody there, yeah. all right? Um, very quickly, Jambi, if you can just get us a hamper, all right? Because I just want to give that hamper to, to dad over here. They're over there, all right? We'll give that to you after the break. Can we clap for her dad first? <laughs> How proud are you, Dad, when you see your daughter sitting here and being so eloquent and doing so wonderful? I'm, I'm very, very proud. Yeah. And uh, you know, if we, I wish if the, ma <coughs> the mother was around, yeah. although she was quite busy this, this morning, she was engaged everywhere, uh, somewhere. We are happy. We are proud of yeah. our daughter, who well, she's doing well and uh, very disciplined. And uh, the something she said, she one day she want to become president of. Uh, President of World Health Organization. Wow. And you know, she, she'll become yeah. that. Oh because us, we are Christians, we really believe in that. Yeah. What you pray, that's what you get. Absolutely. Uh, so the same thing will happen. That's it will happen. Yeah, it I will. believe it because you're so passionate and you're, you're very you. good at what you do. You. And I can't wait to see where you take your career. We wish you all the best. When do you graduate, darling? Uh, 2019. 19, huh? Yes. Yeah, I know you guys are in school for like 10 years and then you go into residency. Yeah. And then it's postgrad, postgrad, it's it's the whole life. But you're gonna focus on pediatric care. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Amazing. Thank we you. love you on the show. Please come back. All right. We're going to. What we want to do, especially as we head into season two, is uh, we want to have a panel of, of ah. different uh, experts in the field. Okay. Um, and see how we can we can really help a lot of parents across this country. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. It is our absolute pleasure having you. Thank you. I've also had so much fun here. Yay! I yeah. know it was a bit crazy. We took our, our <laughs> first calls. Thank you.